Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. You know, most of the images that I carve come from black and white images that are high resolution. But have you ever had that friend call and say, hey, I've got a color photo of a logo, I want you to carve it. What do you do? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get started. This was a JPEG file that he sent me of the color logo. And you can see the resolution is not that high. First thing I've done is open up Inkscape and I'm going to import in the photo that was sent to me on my phone. And as far as the first pop-up window, yes, I do want it embedded and I'm going to go ahead and open that. Okay, I've got it imported in now. This is in Inkscape and the color and you can't really see this. This green actually turned out to be black but that's okay. So now what I want to be able to do is take a look at the edges. The edges actually look pretty sharp even though it's a fairly low resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and I'm going to select the uh, path, trace bitmap and then over here I've got the two colors and I'm going to do the update and that's what it's going to look like so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that image is on top of the original so I'm just going to click on it and slide it over and I'm going to click on the original we'll slide it over and actually delete it out I don't need it anymore. So that's the image and if you wanted to confirm all I would need to do is have this highlighted and I could click on the nodes and you can see the various nodes around the whole thing. Now there's not a lot of nodes here so this actually should carve quite nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll bring this into the easel software. Okay, I've got a new window open and I'm going to go ahead and import that. Click on the import. I did save it as an SVG file. This is it right here. And you notice it's kind of unusual. This is down here it is a tiny little bitty dot. So I'm going to catch this corner and we're going to blow this up significantly. Okay, that's probably a little bit too big, but there we go. That imported quite nicely. It looks very sharp, and I think this will carve very good. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is put the letters in. The text that I'm going to use, I'm going to highlight that, is this one. And I'm going to slide this up. And what I'm going to do is just backspace this out. Put in junior high. Okay. And then I'm going to highlight this. Whoops. Dropped it. And I'm going to bring that right up into there. And that's really all I need to do for that. Creekside, on the other hand, is going to be curved letters. We'll get rid of that. Alright, there's the word Creekside. But now then, how do you get this to curve around? Well, we're going to go up here to one of the apps. And we're going to use the Exploder app. that will separate the letters. So now that I'm going to bring that into it, this creek side I no longer need, so I'll delete that, cut it. All right. 
And you also notice I misspelled Creekside, but that's okay. Oops, I grabbed both of them. Just barely catch the bottom. As long as they're touching, it'll grab them. So we'll bring that up to here. Now, this is where I need to be able to have my arc drawn in. So what I'm going to do is create an oval. And I'm going to bring that right up into here. We're going to stretch this out. We're going to make an oval. I don't want it to conform exactly to it. And you can play with this shape to be able to get it where it looks right for you. I'm also going to get rid of the fill function. I'm going to make this as the as an outline. And I think that looks pretty good. Now then, from this point, it's actually a matter of taking these letters We'll slide it out of the way so we can work with it. In fact, what I'm going to do is blow this up, get a little bit bigger area that I can work with. We'll slide these letters out of the way. And even though I misspelled Creekside, it doesn't really matter. K is going to be the middle letter. So I'll bring K down and sit it right on my curve. And then I'm going to grab the S. bring the S down and I'm going to tilt it just a little bit to conform with my oval. I'm going to do the same thing with the I. Slide that over to conform to it. And then the D. I'm not worried about the depth right now. All I want to be able to do is get the placement of the letters. And there we go. And then the E. I'm going to go back now, go in the other direction. And I'll need this E. Whoops. Grab this E. Pull it down, do the same thing. Now granted, this is a little bit tedious to be able to do this. There are other programs out there that make this a lot easier, that curves the whole word at the same time. But unfortunately, easel is not that program. The H, I don't need. We'll cut that. We'll bring this C down. And we'll slide that into place. In essence, that's all you need to be able to do to create the curved letters. Once you're happy with it, you take this original oval and you'll be able to cut that out and then you have it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is off camera is to adjust these letters, size it a little bit better, and I'll go ahead and come back with the uh, finished product. Okay, we're all ready to carve now. This is the preview. We are using a 60 degree bit. And let's get an idea of how long it's going to take to carve this. And it looks like it's going to take about an hour and 50 minutes. Now one of the things that I did in this large open area for the sea and around Gator Nation, I actually ran a simulation to be able to do the two-stage carving. And it actually only saved about less than 10 minutes. So rather than go through the bit change and resetting everything up, I'm going to leave the 60 degree bit in the whole time. Now you also know that I'm using the VCAR Pro and the reason being is I'm using the V-Bits. 
Just as a reminder, you get four free days a month using the VCAR Pro, and this allows you to know that you're going to be using that. But when I hit the car button, it also gives me a notice up here that I have four days left in this month, which means, guys, I haven't used it at all. So yes, I'm using a free day today. So now everything else is going to be normal. I'm just going to follow the checklist and go ahead and get this carve started. Okay, the X carve now is beginning to do the carve using the uh, Easel Pro. And one of the nice things about the Pro version is that as it carves the letters, at the end it comes back and does a little bit of a finishing pass and then it also will go into each of the corners as you can see right here and sharpen those corners up and make it look very nice and very professional. Now keep in mind this is extremely soft wood so it does have a, does have a little bit of extra tear out but all in all that looks very good. While this is carving, I want to point out that this is the first color logo and the process that I went through to do it. The second one, which is part two of the video, will actually go into how to prepare that other color logo, which is a completely different process. So don't miss part two. All right, this is the sign directly off of the machine with no cleanup. Now, this is just an inexpensive pine board that I got from the big box store. And there's going to be some cleanup that's going to be necessary to be able to make this into a pretty sign. But with a little bit of sanding, I think it'll be fine. The other thing is, I went deeper on this one. This was 0.2 of an inch deep, which is deeper than what I normally do. But what I was looking to be able to accomplish there's a white line that I'm going to paint on this C, on this inside uh, bevel. And I wanted that to be able to show up, so that's why I went a little bit deeper. But if you look at that, all in all, it looks pretty good. But yes, it does take some sanding to be able to clean it up. Now this was untreated. There was no sealer on this at all. The next one that I'm going to do, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, is with sealer and actually with the first coat of paint on it. And we're going to look side-by-side -side when it comes directly off of the machine. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.